In this movie, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the modelling software that I'm using in this course. The software is Enterprise Architect from Spark Systems. I'll give you an overview of the user interface and how models are structured in EA. I shall only be using the basics of EA, as you may be using a different modelling tool, so I'll limit this to features that might be common to whatever modelling tool you're using. The things I'll cover are the project browser, the drawing area or diagram pane, the toolbox, the properties pane, how you access menus and dialogues, and the options dialog. Finally, we'll create an empty project model that you can use in the next chapter. You should follow along with that part of the movie. Here's Enterprise Architect when you start it up. If you're starting it for the first time, it will offer you the chance to open up an example project called EA Example. I'll select that and open it. It has examples of how you can use EA. There are lots of examples that are linked together. If I double click on the UML modeling here, it will take me into information with further examples of UML diagrams. These examples are linked together and you can explore it if you're using EA and want to find out more. I'm going to close it and use a model called Model Final. This is in the supporting files for this course. It's the project that will have been produced by the time you get to the end of the course if you follow along and do all the exercises. When you open a project, unless it's been set up to open a particular diagram by default, you'll see a view something like this. In the centre is the start page, and on the right is the project browser. Enterprise Architect does have a variety of view options, and it may default to a different setup. You can drag most of the panes around and switch their display on and off in the view menu. Let me show you. I can drag the project browser around and position it in a different place on the screen. I can close it all together, and then in the view menu, I can switch its display back on again by selecting it. I can drag it back to where it was, over there. If the layout is different and you want to have it like this, then experiment with moving the various panes around in the window. Home Automation is the name of the model that we're working with, and you can see it in the project browser with a plus sign next to it. If I click on the plus sign, I can see a number of views. And if I click on the plus sign next to Class View, I can see a diagram icon and a number of packages. This is the basic structure of projects in EA. Typically, there's one model at the top level, though there can be more than one. Then there are views below that, and then packages below the views, and diagrams and elements in the packages and views. Packages are the main mechanism for organising the structure of models in UML. If I open up the domain package, then I can see diagrams, more packages, and then classes, which are the model elements that you would find in the class view. The icons for diagrams all have multiple elements joined together by connectors, whereas the icons for model elements, like classes, are all single things, as here. I'll open up the diagram called Domain. You'll see that it opens in the diagram pane or drawing area in the centre of the window. This is where we do the work of producing diagrams and building up the content of the model. If you're using another tool rather than EA, you'll probably find it has similar structure, with some kind of browser for navigating through the content of your model, and a drawing area. You may have noticed that this top left pane changed when I opened the diagram. This is the toolbox. It displays the things that you might want to add into a particular kind of diagram. In this case, because it's a class diagram, it shows the elements that I'm most likely to add into a class diagram. I'll open up a use case diagram in the use case view. You can see that the toolbox has changed. It now shows the elements that I'm most likely to add into a use case diagram. I can add elements by clicking on the toolbox and then clicking onto the diagram. We won't carry on with that now, as that's what we'll be doing in the movies when we start looking at particular kinds of diagram. Over on the right, at the bottom, there's a properties pane. Some modelling tools provide this as the main means for editing the properties of model elements. If I go back to that class diagram called Domain, using the tabs at the top of the diagram area, if I select one of the classes in the diagram, then you'll see that the properties of that model element are displayed in that properties pane at the bottom right. If I choose another class, then the properties of that class are displayed. Some tools allow you to edit properties of a model element through a dialog box. In EA, if I double click on an element in a diagram, or for that matter on the background of the diagram itself, I get a properties dialog for that element or for the diagram. This also applies if I double click on something in the project browser. If I select an element in the diagram by clicking on it, then the options in the element menu will apply to that selected element. There are also functions that I can access through a context menu, 
In Windows, if I right-click on an element, a context menu appears. Two of the options in this menu that you'll lose a lot are the ones under Features and Properties, Attributes and Operations. Here's the Attributes dialog for that class I selected, and I can switch to the Operations dialog using this list of pages over on the left. You may occasionally need to change settings in the modelling tool. In EA, this is mainly done through the dialog that appears if you select Tools in the main menu bar, and then Options. This is the EA Options dialog, and you can see there's a list of pages down the left-hand side. They control different features. Before we finish with EA, let's create an empty project that we'll be using in the next chapter when we start modelling. I'll close this project. Depending on the modelling software that you're using, there may be different ways that you're expected to create a new model. In EA, I could click on New File here in the Start page, but for most tools, it's likely to be an item in the File menu. In EA, it's File, New Project. So I select that, and the File dialog appears. I'll put the project file into Documents, where it is here, and I'll call it Home Automation. Enterprise Architect creates the file, and it gives me the opportunity to populate it with some boilerplate structures and content but we want it empty, so I'll cancel out of this dialog. Now I'll exit EA, and that project file will be ready for us to use when we start modeling in the next chapter. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials, and be sure to like us on Facebook.